specialty pest LLC. We specialize in bed bug remediation. We also have Marcy and uh, Barkley, who I don't have a picture yet. They are bed bug detection canines. So she's on the hunt right there. I brought her here with me. Uh, she's on the hunt right there. I'll use my home for regular training. I keep a, a bottle that's got a vent on the top. There's actually a live bed bug. I can kind of pass it around if you guys want to look. It can't get you. <laughs> But uh, we hide the bottles and we take them through the house on regular training every day to make sure they can still find the bottle. So, um, so that's what she's looking for there. But um, I'll give you a, a brief history of bed bugs. Um, bed bugs have been around for centuries. They live with humans in caves. Uh, we started using DDT for pest control during World War II. Uh, the reason for that is they caused major problems in the barracks. You see right there, that's an, that's an actual ad from back in the day for uh, bed bug control in the barracks. So we started DDT back in World War II. It, it's been invented since early 1900s, but they didn't know it was a pest control a, a product until around World War II, and the guy who discovered it actually got a Nobel Peace Prize for it. So now it's outlawed. Um, the, uh, they banned it in 73, the EPA, um, and uh, in 73, the, the, the DDT has a 30-year shelf life. So if you think about it, they sprayed all the homes up until 73, then they stopped using it. Now we're in the early 2000s, or starting in the early 2000s, that 30 years is up, we start seeing a resurgence in bed bugs, go figure. Mm -hmm. Another important thing to note about 73, or in the 70s, uh, we started increasing world travel. So places that never did anything for bed bugs, a lot of them started moving over here or visiting over here because of, you know, flying around was easier. Around that time period, we started increasing it because they were bringing more in. Um, they're the perfect pest. <laughs> I know that that's a, kind of an oxymoron there, but uh, they've been called a, uh, a pandemic for a reason. And uh, the reason is, one, is they can go 12 to 18 months without feeding. They only feed a, on a, what they call a blood meal, on our blood. That's all they feed on. So they'll go 12 to 18 months without feeding. They only need to be inseminated once to continue to give birth for the rest of their life. <laughs> so they'll live about a year. They actually live longer if they feed less um, but so once they've been inseminated they'll continue to lay the eggs about one to three eggs per day for an entire year and so you pick up something from the movie theater and you go home and it happens to be the female you've got an infestation in the making that's what happens right there's a little picture you can see the this is a pad underneath of a couch so it doesn't scratch the floor those little white spots about a millimeter those are all bed bug eggs <laughs> Egg to reproducing adult is within two months. So the egg gets laid, it's having more babies in two months. They're also reclusive. You saw them down there by the pad, you're not going to see them unless you're allergic and you start waking up with bites and start questioning. 50% of the population are not even allergic to bed bugs. So that means you're not going to know until you have an infestation, they're crawling all over the place. And so they're very reclusive, so they're hard to find. Uh, there'll be some pictures in here, you can see different areas we found them. Uh, they're resistant to most pesticides on the market. So there is no residual pest control that works for bed bugs. When we do a bed bug treatment, we have to go back two to three times so that we can kill the eggs as they're hatching because I can't spray your house once and expect to kill the bugs as they hatch because by that time, it's already weak enough in a week's time that it doesn't even affect them. Um, they're also one of, they are the most expensive pest to rid right now. Um, Average cost is anywhere from $400 a room to $3,500 for a whole house. So if you guys have any rental properties that you're dealing with, this is going to become a big problem where most people don't own that house outright, so you may be lucky to make a few hundred dollars after the mortgage is paid on that rental. If you get a bed bug infestation in one of those units and you're paying $2,500 to $3,500, how long before you start making any money on your investment? These are different methods that we've got pictures of. This is fumigation. They actually tent the entire house and fumigate it like termites. This is called thermal remediation. They drag in big heaters into the house, cook the house at 140 degrees. Bed bugs die at 115. They use the fans to blow it into all the areas so the whole house gets heated up. Um, and then the last method is obviously being very thorough with uh, chemical and a mixture of chemical and steam, which is what we offer. Um, and the difference is, is cost as you change the different methods. So there's different bed bug laws. Uh, Back east, there's a lot more laws there than we have here yet, uh, so far, I should say. Bed bug disclosure laws are required in a lot of states. That's one thing that was in our new legislation that's coming out in September, but they've taken it out for now. Um, 
furniture disposal laws in New York, you can't throw any furniture away without marking it. And um, real estate inspection laws, believe it or not, just like uh, termites and stuff like that, in some states, and eventually it'll happen here, where you have to show proof that you've had the home inspection, inspected for bed bugs prior to selling it. There's also landlord tenant laws. That's the new one that we're dealing with here. It's actually it's called SB 1306. It goes into effect in the, in the September of this year. They'll sign it into effect. Basically, what that states right now is that uh, you the, uh, the the tenant has about three days to notify the landlord of a problem, then the landlord has to pay for it. So, doesn't really help the landlord out a whole lot. That's why there's programs that we have in place to, to kind of protect the landlords and the tenants so that they can make sure that they don't end up with that big $2,500 bill. Uh, basic identification. This is an identification chart. Obviously, these are blown up. The egg's about a millimeter. When they first hatch, they're about a, a millimeter and a half. They eat one blood meal, then they molt, then they grow. They have another blood meal at two millimeters, and they molt, and they grow again. And then it'll continue all the way around until they get to an adult, which is they, they, they describe it as the looking like an apple seed. They're about a they're about a quarter inch, so they're they're very easy to see when you know what you're looking for. Um, and so that that's kind of a just an idea for you, a basic ID. So another thing important about bed bugs and IDing them, right here we have a bat bug. And then right here we have a bed bug. Okay? They look almost identical if you didn't know what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of bad bugs because they'll feed off birds and stuff like that, and, and, uh, but not humans. They're not a human host insect. And so what happens is you'll have a company that goes out but doesn't know how to identify it properly. And then they'll quote you a $2,500 treatment job on bad bugs, which all you needed was to call Bulwark in to come and do a basic, basic spray. Uh, so anyway, so proper identification is key for this with the canines, obviously my canines. Bat bugs don't put off the same pheromone the bed bugs do, so the canines won't won't indicate on a bat bug, um, so we can clear a house that way as well. Some of the jobs we've been in, that's just been a, a, a screw probably about a millimeter, uh, maybe about two millimeters wide, and they're packing inside there with eggs. This is the edge of a mattress, obviously severe infestation. This is underneath of a couch. Um, that's up in the ceiling of the, of the room. Oh, the they go to ceilings too. They'll travel about 15 feet to find their host. So, if you look on your bed and you're not seeing anything, but something fishy is going on, you just you got to make sure you look all over. The other thing too is if you know anybody that's got this issue, just please tell them not to drag their mattress out of the house right away. That's what that's what so my neighbors did when I called you. Yeah, they'll they drag. They put them on the they put it on the curb to, for them to yeah. come pick it up. Well, the problem with so doing that is they're going to drag those bed bugs all through their house as they're Dang. taking that out of the home. So, a lot of people that's the first thing they do. They panic. They yeah. think it's limited to just the mattress. So they take that mattress out thinking they solved it, now they just spread it through their whole house. So now they just took a $400 job and jumped it to $2,500. These are different bites. <laughs> so when I said 50% of the population doesn't react, the other 50% has completely different reactions from each other. So obviously the guy on the left is a, really bad reaction. Is, a is a very severe reaction. And you've got this one here where you, wouldn't, you might just think it's a blemish. And then see how you seem in a row? When you wake up and you have bites, two or three in a row, right next to each other, pretty good chance there might be bed bugs. But bed bug bites can look like mosquito bites, depending on your reaction. They can look like a bee sting, depending on your reaction. They can look like so many different things, they're, they're just hard to like narrow down and down. Next part is just real quick going into the, the use of canines, and because those are a big topic, a lot of people are using those now on regular type maintenance, especially if you have rental properties and stuff. And the reason we use dogs is they're intelligent, they're loyal, so all they're doing is working for me. Um, and, and, a, and a treat. I wish all employees were like that, but dogs especially are. And they're very eager to please. That's pretty much why they're there, is just to make me happy. They don't, they don't care what they're doing necessarily, other than they're doing something that they don't make me happy. Um, their dog's ability to smell, and I'm just going to go through this real quick. They're basically, dog's anatomy are meant to smell. They've got uh, 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 parts per million, where we have parts per hundred when it comes to our scent organs. They call it the olfactory scent. Um, human, humans have 5 million receptor cells in their nasal cavity, dogs have 100 to 250 million. So when we train them, it's like scent imprinting. Same thing as geese flying south for the winter and fish stream, swimming upstream. It's just an imprint in their mind. Marcy, I have her back there. She's got that imprint to where she knows that she finds that, that specific scent, nothing else. She gets a reward. So that's what she works for. 
Um, we also do right at repetitive exposure. Like I said, every day we spend 30 minutes of training, uh, just so she keeps that going. It's just like kids learning or learning a new language. Um, the initial training for a dog is over 600 hours, and they don't do anything with obedience. It's all strictly scent identification for bed bugs. <clears throat> and then, like I said, the ongoing training, daily reinforcement. Um, and so we'll, you know, they smell different items all day, but they're trained to only find the right ones. So, and hurt, they have different, um, different alerts. There's the passive alert, aggressive alert. Passive alert is what we prefer, so you don't have a dog screaming through your hotel, barking, because they found their treat or their, their target, whereas the canines for, for active alert for, for police, that's what they do. They're obviously more aggressive. Um, we do a visual, visual verification if a dog finds anything. I don't feel comfortable telling you need a service unless I can prove it that you need a service because it does cost so much money and you should always expect that from the company providing you service. So if you, if you have anybody come out and they're going to quote you on a, on a bed bug job, unless they can provide physical proof that you're dealing with bed bugs, it costs too much money to take the risk. So even though my dog alerts, she's a tool for my business. She alerts the area so I'm not spending five hours searching your house. I've only got to spend a few minutes searching a specific area. Um, also, we want to make sure they're not false alerting. So, uh, common uses, proactive benchmarking, due diligence, and litigation. If you have a dog inspect a house prior to somebody moving in that says the house is clear, dogs can be admissible in court to state that you did not have a problem before they moved in. So there's no, they, it's harder for them to try and sue you because you've got that on record. Um, the also thing, the other thing, way they're used is peace of mind. So hotel guests back east, you know, we're a little hush hush here, but back east where everybody knows there's a problem, they advertise, hey, our dog, our hotel's regularly inspected by canines. So there's peace of mind there, um, and the same thing for new residents. Hey, we've had this apartment checked before you guys moved in. There's no bed bugs. So as it becomes a bigger issue, you're going to probably start getting those calls. Hey, did you guys check this for bed bugs, or has there been a problem? As of right now, our law doesn't state that there's a disclosure, but there will be. It's just a matter of time. Uh, different places the bed bugs have been found: hotels, apartments, schools, hospitals, theaters, airplanes, cruise ships. Um, restaurants now, right? Restaurants, restaurants can get them. Seats, yeah, benches. absolutely. All, all somebody's got to do is sit down, have one fall off. When you sit there, you take a home. We need somebody to be another Nobel Prize winner. Or <laughs> We're waiting for that. Make a new one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, advantages: dog uses scent location. Human has to use visual. Dogs are 98% accurate. Now that is in a controlled environment. In reality, we're probably about 80 to 85% with all the different scents that are going on if you have pets or kids or that kind of thing. Um, but humans are still only about 40 to 50% and I would, I would argue that's even less in some cases because uh, a, good, a good visual inspection should spend about an hour to an hour and a half per room. And I don't know any pest control company that's got time to do that and, be, and not get frustrated, which is another part down there. Easy to get tired or frustrated, where the dogs, they're just eager to, eager to please. Appreciate it.